coming up, Shohei Otani does it all in a doubleheader sweep for LA. This is Locked On Game to Game, MLB. Every game, every team, every angle. Locked On Game to Game, your team every day. Welcome in. You're listening to Locked On Game to Game. MLB local experts join us every weekday to go over all of the action for you from yesterday across Major League Baseball. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On your first listen every single weekday. Shohei Otani is officially off the trade block, and he just keeps raising the bar with the Angels. He gave up one hit in a complete game shutout in the first game of the doubleheader, and then he hit two home runs in game two of an L.A. sweep. Locked On Angels has more on an outstanding showing. Hey, not sure why Congress is interviewing somebody about aliens when you've got a real live unicorn in Southern California terrorizing Major League Baseball. Hey everybody, it's Mike Frisch, one half of Locked on Angels. The Angels get a doubleheader sweep and a series sweep against the Detroit Tigers thanks to Shohei Otani. In game one, he threw a complete game shutout and in game two, he hit not one, but two home runs and the Angels walk away with a big victory just three games out of the wild card. They made a big trade, and John and I are going to talk about all of it on Locked On Angels. Come and join us. The Guardians have floated around 500 for a while now, but there's no question. They are not going to be selling at the deadline. They will be trying to take a shot at winning the week AL Central. They got a half game on the Idle Twins with a win over the White Sox yesterday, and Locked On hosts recap that matchup. Guardians take game one of an important series against the White Sox 6-3 on Thursday night. I'm Justin Latticoast of Lockdown Guardians. You might think playing the Chicago White Sox right now doesn't make for an important series with the Guardians. It really is. They are now in a three-game winning streak. They are a game and a half behind the Minnesota Twins, who were idle on Thursday. The Guardians have a tough, tough month of August coming up with Houston on the docket coming on Monday. They have to play Toronto, the Rays, the Reds, the Dodgers, all in the month of August. So the Guardians have four games here now three left with the White Sox vital to win all of them or at least three out of four to keep pace with things Guardians ran the bases well they hit the ball hard one of their best offensive approaches of the year uh, people thought in the post the Med Rosario era there'd be some issues with that but the offense was clicking on Thursday night Tanner Bobby Electric as usual his breaking stuff starting to see an improvement in, in terms of his curveball we're going to cover all of that and more it's more of the post-mortem on the Med Rosario trade on Lockdown Guardians a fifth straight win has the Cubs all the way back to 500, and their trade deadline decisions have become much more difficult after they beat the Cardinals last night. Locked on hosts go over everything after the final. Cubs are red hot, six in a row. Four out of their last five recently against the St. Louis Cardinals. They go into Bush and dominate St. Louis. The story from this game in a quiet MLB night was Miles Michaelis getting thrown out three batters in, throwing at Ian Happ twice in a row after Ian Happ unintentionally knocked out Wilson Contreras from the game. He didn't actually knock him out, but he he was bloody on his head with a, a, a backswing from Ian Happ. So Contreras had to leave the game, which was unfortunate. There was no intent from Ian Happ. But, you know, the Cardinals were still upset that that cost Contreras the game. Michaelis threw a ball up and in the half, missed him, then threw another one right at him, kind of forced the umpire's hand, and Michaelis was ejected. Uh, Dakota Hudson came in and got knocked around, and the Cubs were pretty much playing this game from the front foot early on. Justin Steele, 4-0 this season against the St. Louis Cardinals, um, has been as good as any pitcher uh, across the major leagues. Cubs are rolling, just five and a half now out of the division and four out of the wild card. Keep it going. The Nationals and Mets took a pitcher's duel into the late innings in New York, and our Locked On hosts tell you who pulled out the win late on Thursday. The New York Mets beat the Washington Nationals 2-1 on Thursday night, but that's not what people care about, really. The Mets are sellers. They announced themselves as such when they just traded David Robertson to their division rival, the Miami Marlins, for a pair of teenagers. Mets fans are not going to like the return on this trade because these guys are far away, but on the show, I will be explaining why this actually might be a better return than people think. This is Ryan Fickelstein, the host of Locked On Mets, and we are full go on this Mets selling season. Justin Verlander could be on the move as well. We know Tommy Pham, Mark Canna, the rentals that are still in this roster could be headed out. This is an opportunity for the New York Mets to reset their farm a little bit, something they haven't done since 2018. Could be a really good chance here 
for them to make some smart trades. And hopefully this first one with the Marlins is that. Uh, but there's certainly a lot more on the way ahead of Tuesday's trade deadline. That's it for this edition of Locked On Game to Game MLB. Thank you so much for making Locked On your first listen every single weekday. The trade deadline is a couple of days away, so make sure that you're subscribed to Locked On MLB and your favorite team's Locked On podcast on YouTube and wherever else you get your podcasts from. I'm Kainani Stevens. This has been Locked On Game to Game.